Finding a like-minded partner, someone who's interested in a different way of living from what most people do, someone who's interested in meditation or spirituality or just living in a different way, it can be so, so difficult, especially because we're living in a world that doesn't really value those things. My husband and I have been married for almost four years, but before meeting him, I never ever intended to be married. I didn't even think I was ever gonna be in a relationship. And I was completely happy with that, because I just didn't think there was any <laughs> possibility in the whole wide world that I would find someone who was interested in living a life the way I wanted to live my life. And that is actually my first tip when it comes to finding a like-minded partner. Stop looking. <laughs> it may seem counterintuitive, but there's a reason why things come to us when we least expect them. It's because when we give up searching, we also give up attachment. I'm sure you know what I mean because I think we've all been guilty of doing it. And it's when we go out to date, not to meet other people or out of curiosity, but we go out to date to find someone. We go on a date to end up in a relationship with that person. We go on a date because we want to have children. and. As you hopefully can hear, there is so, so, so much attachment that comes with that. And if you've ever been on a date with someone who has these attachments and you can see them sitting at the opposite side of the table with you and sort of thinking of these things like, does she want to have children? Does she want to be married? There is just so much attachment and pressure and it doesn't let me or whoever you're on a date with, it doesn't allow that person to be themselves because there isn't enough room. So we need to leave space for that other person we're on a date with to be themselves. Non Attachment doesn't mean non-action, which I think some people confuse it with. So that's my next point. But after a few years of dating, honestly, I was bored. I didn't see the fun of it anymore. I wasn't that curious to meeting new people. I was pretty happy with the people I knew and being by myself. So I was just bored by the whole thing and in fact with my life. So I decided to <laughs> change it all completely. I decided to quit drinking and quit partying and start meditating and move to the other side of the world, namely China. And that is where me and my husband's story start. We met during our first week at our new job. We were on the International People's Shuttle Bus back to our accommodation, where on the third day of working, I realized I talked to basically everybody in my group apart from him. So I walked up to him on the bus and asked if the seat next to him was free, and he said yes. We spent the whole bus ride home talking about everything in the world, and although having no expectations, I could definitely tell that I enjoyed talking to him. And funny enough, neither of us thought we could date the other person, which we were talking Talked about later of course because I ruled him out because I was sure he was too young and he ruled me out because he thought I was too old which turns out we're exactly the same age <laughs> but more on that later because once you meet someone the next step is so 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 important I cannot understate how important it is and for me it was easy but normally it's hard but I was in a new country with no past or future so I decided to try it and that was radical honesty and since I didn't really have anything to lose I decided to hold myself accountable I told him that I didn't think I'd ever been honest with another person in my entire life I said I wanted to do that now and it was really important to me we started out with complete honesty but without any expectations and for me this was so so important I obviously didn't know that then <laughs> but it was so important for me to build a relationship on this foundation because growing up I had never seen a relationship that was built on honest communication. Instead I saw people around me build their relationships with their loved ones on beliefs, ideas, and concepts about who the other person was. I never saw them relax fully and be fully themselves with the other person. There was always this slight slight difference, not really sharing the most vulnerable parts of ourselves. And don't get me wrong, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to share the most vulnerable parts of yourself with someone you don't know because it might not necessarily be safe, but in this situation, it definitely was. And you can for sure have a relationship like most people do and be happy, but I think if you're on the quest for the ultimate truth in life, you have to be on that same quest in your relationship with your partner. To want to find a like-minded partner, right? It means that you have some desire in you of who you want to be that you want to share with someone. That means that you need to be radically and honestly yourself to be able to share that with someone. An example that relates to the amount of honesty and freedom I need and want to feel in a relationship to be happy is the example and idea of taking off your backpack when you come home from work. So when you come home from school or work, there's this incredible relief and sensation of taking off your backpack, especially if you're like me and you hate <laughs> those two things. But anywho, when I take off my backpack, I feel completely at ease, completely relaxed and calm. And for the first time in a whole day out in the world, I feel completely myself. 
and I need to be able to feel that way with my partner too, but the only way to get there is through honesty. So as we started to get to know each other, my husband and I, it became apparent that we came from two completely different worlds and we were extremely different. But this is what I think is really important about finding a like-minded partner. You don't have to be the same, you don't have to have the same hobbies or the same interests, but there has to be something else. And for us, that was what is the most alike in the two of us, is that we come to the same conclusions. There was, for the example, in the beginning of our relationship, we had the discussion about veganism. I was vegan, my husband was not, yet we both cared about the same things. We shared the same values on ethics and the environment and animals. So when I told him I was vegan, it was very easy for him to just jump on board. In fact, he even said that he knew he should be vegan, he just didn't know where to start. But now he did. So that's what I mean when I say coming to the same conclusions. We don't need to have the same hobbies or opinions, that really doesn't matter. But what we need to do is agree on the reasoning behind our actions and our beliefs and ideas. To be like-minded means that we share the same reasoning, we share the same beliefs, and that means that our motivations and our goals always stay the same. They stay together and they bring us closer together rather than apart. So although not all of our interests collide, we do support each other in being who we want to be and being what we want to become, and that is where I think being like-minded becomes the most important. So back to our relationship and my next tip. I knew that I really cared about this guy, right? So I know I had to do something that I had never done before and that is so, so important. So I decided that I would not allow myself under any circumstances to daydream. I think most of us know what I mean when I say this, right? It's daydreaming, it's visualizing, it's fantasizing about our future together with this person we've just met, fantasizing and dreaming about what our future will become only from our own perspective and always with rose-tinted glasses on to make sure it's absolutely perfect. And I knew I had to not do it because it can easily become a habit, something you do every time you meet a new person, even new friends and start new relationships and that then continues on throughout your entire relationship. And this is not good. In fact, I'd say it's a trap because it creates a fake reality that you're not even letting your partner be part of. Fantasizing about moving countries together or having kids, it all creates so much attachments and expectations for this tiny little relationship that might not even have that much substance. Instead, I think we should do what is much more difficult, especially in a new relationship. Number one, don't daydream. Just stick to that rule as hard as you can and also avoid doing it when you speak to your friends. And number two, talk to your partner about these dreams. You are two people together, right? Your dreams involve the other person as well. It involves their perceived reality, it involves their expectations and their dreams. So doing it from just your perspective is not only gonna be attached and wrong, but it literally won't involve the person you care most about doing this with. Allow their dreams to be shared with your dreams and create the most perfect dreams together. Because what we wanna do is we want to tell them how we feel and share what matters, even though that's quite scary. I think we often fantasize, at least in my experience, is because we secretly, in our hearts and in our emotions, know that that other person isn't as attached to us as we are to them. It's a way of controlling our reality, it's a way of taking back control over the narrative of our lives. And of course when we like someone a lot and we really want to spend time with them and we don't necessarily feel that back or we're too scared to allowing them into our lives, fantasizing is a much easier version of reality than telling them how you feel and risk rejection. Because what we do when we fantasize is that we're basically generating attachment. We're turning into greedy little love monsters that just wants to be loved so bad, not even caring about the other person's reality or what you actually deserve. So those first weeks of being together, I knew I wanted to spend every waking moment with him if I could, but I actually had no idea that I was in love with him because I tried to keep an open mind as much as possible. Even months into our relationship, I didn't consider if we would move away from China together, if we would stay there, what would happen if one of us wanted to leave. All these things just didn't seem to matter. It seemed more important that I was here, present with him, and even now being married, I still look at it very much the same way, completely without expectations. Yes, we're married, but if one day we don't want to be married anymore, that day, that grief, as we say in Sweden, then we simply won't. And as long as we're on the same path, we are on the same path. But if our curiosities decides to take us elsewhere, I hope we can move wherever we want, with or without each other, with as little attachment as possible, but still with as much love as possible. 
Another thing I think most people who say that they want a like-minded partner so, so bad is they forget that part where they say they want a partner who live an alternative lifestyle whilst they don't live an alternative lifestyle just yet. It's a common pitfall for us humans, right? Is this idea of doing it on Monday, of doing it next week, of starting to be different next week or next year or next month or whatever it may be. Think about it this way. <laughs> if you want to devote your life to meditation and spiritual practice and you want to find someone who also does that, you're probably not going to find them when you're working at your current job that you hate in an office in the middle of the city. You're much more likely to find that partner of your dreams if you yourself go out and fulfill and chase your dreams. You are finding them <laughs> literally on the same path as you. And that was also how I met my husband. Looking back at it, I met him on a new path. I didn't meet him on that other path that I was living. I met him when I was practicing meditation, when I was starting a new spiritual practice, when I had started running, when I had started listening to myself and living a much more healthy and balanced life. And he had a very, very similar journey. For me, it makes so much sense because on those previous paths we were on, we could have never met each other because we had nothing that would make us want to be with the other person. We would have been interested in the complete opposite things. But here we were in a new country searching for a bigger meaning with our lives and we found each other on that journey. So now we just continue that journey of searching for unconditional love and truth. I've always said you can't want what you don't have. And that might not make sense to you now, <laughs> but I hope it will very soon. What I mean when I say that we can't want relationships because we don't have them, it is really because we don't know them. And in a sense, it also ties back to that daydreaming and maybe also in the sense that we can't see our future. I want to be in this relationship, this relationship I know because I know it. I could never want to be in any other relationship or I didn't want to be in a relationship before I met my husband because I didn't know this reality. The reality I know now is the one I want to be in, but I can't know what's around the corner, so therefore I can't want it. Instead, I think if we can let go of all attachment, love ourselves unconditionally and hopefully others too to the best of our capabilities, and we can let people enter and exit into our life as freely as they absolutely want to, then I think true love is unavoidable. I love my relationship with my husband. I love our life together. I love that I get to share it with him. I love that I found someone who are interested in the same things that I am, crazily enough, who wants to talk for hours and hours on end and doesn't get sick of it. Someone who loves to explore morals and ethics on their weekends. Someone who isn't interested in partying or drinking or using substances, but rather just having fun together and exploring life and trying to be more passionately ourselves. That's really what I value in our relationship is that yes, we might live an alternative way of life, but we truly try to be as happy as we possibly can. And that's the only thing we're looking for. I think in this world, it can be very, very difficult, especially maybe if you're younger to find people if you live an alternative lifestyle who are interested in the same things as you are. Even for example, finding someone who doesn't wear makeup or who doesn't like to go out or who doesn't have a phone <laughs> or whatever it may be that you so deeply care about. I think it's really important that we let that knowledge and this flexibility we have around our beliefs to sink in a bit before we go on this huge quest to find a relationship. I see so many people and basically all my friends fall into this habit of entering relationship without being sure and then just sort of holding on to it for dear life. And I see other people who are single who seem to be perpetually single. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. So they need to find a like-minded partner and they need to have the same interests and the same ideas and the same everything. But we need to allow other people to be themselves and become bigger and greater and better just like we want to do that as well. We don't want to push people to become better either though. I see that as well. That is terrible. We don't want a partner who yells at, a, at the gym when we don't want to go there. You go to the gym and the other person go on a hike, whatever makes you happy. But I think relationships matter, <laughs> but they also don't. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. And the most important skill we can learn when it comes to relationships is to be happy with ourselves and then to share that love with others, to share the unconditional love and the support and the communication and the honesty in ourselves, our creative selves with someone else who can appreciate them and someone that we can appreciate. So yeah, if you want to find a like-minded partner because you're interested in finding a companion or a friend or whatever it may be, that is all good and well. But don't let that 
be the value of your life. Let yourself be the value of your life much more so than your relationships because relationships ultimately will come and go. We can't take them with us when we die, no matter how much we'd like to. So be happy, be curious, and my favorite example or my favorite tip from Esther Hicks when it comes to relationship is she says, if someone comes up to you, if you go on a date with someone, they say, oh, I love our time together, but I don't, I don't want anything serious. You just say, that sounds great. I'm not looking for anything serious either. I'm just looking to follow my curiosity and see where that leads me. And hopefully one day that lead you to your true love as well, completely without attachment. So I think that was everything. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.